Good afternoon, I'm Thomas Hood. Welcome to Your Town. This is a great opportunity for us to reach out to artists, uh, mechanics, stand-up comics, uh, politicians, start the conversation here in the Monterey Peninsula and hope that uh, you get something beneficial from this. Today we're gonna continue our conversation we started a while back with Jeffrey Beckham, artist, photographer, and architect. So we're gonna go right to the first image. I'm gonna drop you in the deep end here. We'll and try uh, see what we've got here. Let's pull up our first image. We're talking about travel and oh. color here. Well, okay. this was a culmination of, uh, uh, this was an exhibition, probably one that really kind of set the mark for what I was interested in doing. This was an exhibition at the Monterey Museum of Art with Lucas Block, my friend who's mm -hmm. a colorist architect. Together we put together something we refer to as the Color Chapel, which was talking about the way in which color Color isn't about one thing. You don't put, this is red, okay, but that's a particular type of red because some other color's next to it. It's all about these colors, how they interact, and how people react to that based mm -hmm. upon the, how they interact, and how one color will reflect against another. It was a spectacular thing that we did together, uh, and I liked that kind of uh, uh, collaborative work, and I've done that a lot of it. Well, when I see and I look at those images, I'm reminded, obviously, of, of Lucas's work because he does absolutely amazing things, yes. almost trickery. And then I think of people like uh, Barragon, mm -hmm. dealing with the Which, color red above the waterline right. and the pink below the yes. waterline to suggest transparency, sun fading, those elements. These are, are definitely people I've been influenced by. Okay. And uh, So now what happens? You're, you, you're well, doing exhibitions, you're back I, in the States. Yes, uh, well, but I'm Indiana always back in... Indiana is in the distant past. Yeah, well, it is for a while. Um, but um, what, would, what happened originally was, I went to your study architectural history, Mm -hmm. I ended up working, in, uh, uh, focusing on Gothic cathedrals initially, high Gothic cathedrals. I did little paintings of them, brought them back to San Francisco. There was a gallery there dealing in mm -hmm. art by architects. They took the work and sold it all. They said, go back. Brugman? Uh, it was uh, uh, Philippe Bonafont Gallery. Okay, yeah. In, in, uh, on Green. Anyway, um, so I went back and painted again. I had, I had, a, I had a goal then. And what happened was I was painting these little paintings on site and uh, but then I returned to the U.S. and I needed something to work on. I, I, I took photographs to use as the basic basis for larger paintings when, in my studio. I think that's what we've got. Let's you take a look some at the next those. image here. I think some of these, these come in here. So now you're back home and, and you're going to a larger scale. Yes. Well, and what happened was slowly, because of the influence of Sally, my colors got stronger and stronger and my own interest in color. And in this case, uh, if you looked at some of the earlier paintings I, I, I showed examples of, they, were, they got more and more intense in color. And eventually, um, Baker yeah. Coast. Well, and so. I uh, wanted to. While I was in California, I decided, well, I'm going to enjoy being outside on occasion. So I started doing these plein air paintings. These are little. These are only eight by ten paintings. But I started doing larger ones again in studio. While I was also traveling back and forth to Latin America, I was working in South America by this point, and uh, so I was doing several things. Also, I started doing more architecture, more and more architecture. I was, uh, I did mostly for myself. Um, I did several houses. I. While we were living in Berkeley, I did a house, and then when we moved down here, I did a kind of a, uh, a small remodel of a house, and then I just started doing whole houses. Uh, where is this? This is, this is that first house I did. This is in Pacific Grove, and it was an original, this is an original uh, uh, modernist house from 1949, but it looked really crummy. And so what I did is I went in and um, just used paint, basically, to rebuild it. Uh, Took off everything that structural had been done. Structural paint. Yeah, structural paint. That's it. <laughs> took everything off that had been done since uh, it, since it was built, and uh, turned it into that on the inside. And, and, and now, fr from the context, as a 1949 modernist building, that building originally was probably beige, yeah. gray, white. So you're you're applying color in a way that had not been used yes. in this kind of architectural. And, application before. And, and so that's uh, that's what I did. I, I started using color. I started doing color consulting on other people's projects as well. And also did uh, a number of, uh, I did a second, another house right behind that one. I, I took a house that was in Now how do you shape. do a house with those kinds of vivid co colors in an environment where design review gets all the way down to picking out the doorknobs? They took away the color choice because what they found, they had a color review mm -hmm. uh, on their architecture review board. And they found out that all they got was beige, and they said. So they let it go. They let it go just before I moved to town. You're and, lucky. Uh, yes, I was. Because you'd, you'd go back to Indiana saying, "Well, 
I don't miss the snow, but if I got to do beige, I'm moving back <laughs> to Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing was, I got a, I, I, just after he bought that house and I started doing the paint on it, I got a call from the realtor saying, some, oh my God, somebody's graffitied your house. There's paint, there's weird paint all over the place. I, I had <laughs> the same experience. My first house that I did was a 1877 farmhouse mm -hmm. in a community of very neatly stacked little, li little and bigger houses in Winnetka, north of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And the first paint scheme that I did with my wife Emily at the time, our next door neighbor looked out the window and she goes, it looks like hate raspberry. <laughs> and I'm going, you know, you gotta, you gotta take a leap of faith here. Right. So we muted everything. Mm -hmm. And within a year's time, there were three other houses within uh, mm -hmm. walking distance that were trying to do what we Virginia. were doing, which was take those bold San Francisco inspired Victorian colors and apply it in somewhat muted right. fashion. Yeah. And it worked, but they couldn't duplicate right. those colors. Well, um, the, uh, uh, the one advantage I had in Pacific Grove is they just used my book on Mediterranean to, as the basis for painting City Hall. Okay. So they were, I was wondering they were allowing me to, uh, uh, <laughs> to use my colors without any, uh, without any complaints. So I did that, and uh, that was published, and so we got a lot of uh, kind of uh, uh, interest from that kind of work. But at the same time, I was doing the, the photographs, started doing the photographs from Central America by that point, okay. and paintings, as you saw that, that last painting. Yeah. And uh, so I was just kind of jumping back, back and forth between architecture, painting, photography, writing. There was a lot of writing, but mostly having to do with anthropology mm -hmm. and how, uh, why people were using color on their buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and for how long, mostly, in, in, and it was very interesting in, in Latin America because they were using it based upon a religious belief system that had been intact for 3,000 years. Yeah. But it was never brought out until I kind of beat up the anthropologist to give me some idea of what was going on and, well, there's and studied a, there's archaeologists. A, there's a little bit of professional jealousy there. I'm, I'm practicing architecture continuously, and I dove into color more because I found that when I first started to do color renderings for clients up in Marin County. You know, soft hand with a soft pencil, mm -hmm. and there was no punch. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'd rather be a painter, but I don't have time, I'm running this practice. Yeah. So I just started to, to burn the colors in, mm -hmm. because I wanted them in a public forum right. to be, for the drawings to be able to read from 30 right. feet away. So it was sort of a, it was a need to convey the intent of the design by using bolder and bolder colors. Right. But that's an environment, practicing California, where basically everything is outside of Pacific Grove, everything is still beige. And now, what is the color day, that, that's known? Monterey beige, isn't that the... Uh, Monterey beige. Yeah. And it, I, w I was saying, if I could design a house that could, would be a 2,000 square foot house that looked like 800, I'd be famous. Or if I could paint a house a color that would make it invisible in many coastal <laughs> communities. Right. And we've done work in 12 counties. And we're still trying to come up with a color paint that immediately gets approved, makes the house invisible, and when they leave, then we've painted the color we want. <laughs> you know. It's a well, challenge. it is, and uh, I, I don't know. It, it, it was nice for me because I didn't have to rely on any one particular uh, uh, work. Mm -hmm. I could just, if something wasn't feeling right to me, I could just go a different direction, or uh, I don't need this. I'm out of here. Now this is this was up in. Oh well, this is actually this, this was uh, this is one of my architecture thing. pieces that yeah. was in. Uh, this is remodeling an old church building in Flagstaff, Arizona that my printers used, my photography printers. I, mm. I couldn't, uh, with the w lack of water, I couldn't print in, uh, yeah. in, in the area, so I went out to, to the desert where they have plenty of water. Uh, right. So here you've got what, what was probably considered an historic building. You've got the contrast of not only the walls, but the color. Mm. And what I'm thinking about is you're in Pacific Grove where Monterey Beige was co-invented, and you're doing the same thing, is you're contrasting the background, the environment around. Well, this had a, it had a, well, that's, and, and this. And there's Pacific Grove. There's Pacific Grove. That's the house that uh, yeah. I more recently did uh, that we just, uh, we just moved from. Um, but that, uh, that, that church building was actually just, it had been basically abandoned, partly finished, okay. and was in really bad shape and really rough. And we took a really rough exterior and kept that, yeah. and then put this super modern interior that kind of zigzagged through the building. Uh, with using color in contrast as well as the modernism to call out the new parts, and it worked very well. 
the nether side of the inside. Oh this no, is, this no, is this a is uh, this is a, a friend of mine, Jana Weston's condo, who is in love with color, and it's kind of like a. I hope she is. A, she she drove <laughs> this. She drove it further than I ever would have. Yeah. But it's uh, it's it's like a, a a crazy natural history museum, and it's it's just a tremendous amount of fun, and uh, it, it's it's like this throughout. You know what's interesting when I'm looking at at this application of color and thinking back where you were practicing working through school back in the Midwest. From my own experience becoming a Chicago architect, we would take like that church building where you basically leave the rustic exterior. Mm -hmm. And the time we were in Lincoln Park, we would buy, you know, the client would buy this four-story pile. Mm -hmm. And we would gut the inside and we wouldn't bring color in the inside. We were doing all Corbusian and styled right. yeah. modernist right. interiors that were pure white. Yeah. And you know, white p lamb cabinets, white staircases, the sculptural staircases, and it was one after another, and no one dared put color into their buildings well, until they, Stanley Tigerman. And, and, yeah, and, and his and buildings introduced color. And Michael Graves. Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden, people went, "Oh yeah, that's god awful." No, it isn't. It, it, he's he's daring yeah. to do a school for the blind where they can respond to subtleties of really bold colors. Yeah. Yes. And that was a breakout project in yes. Chicago for really the postmodern era. And, and color started, started to come back in. It's, it's postmodernism is when color took off. That's and right. uh, no, I was told, no, you absolutely can't use color in these. And, 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 and that the artwork shows off better on white walls. Well, I, I beg to differ. <laughs> uh, it always, mine, I, I in, in all of the museum installations I've done, I've always required that they paint the buildings with uh, as we did, color. As we did with your show. Yes. Now, where was this taken here? This is, I, uh, in addition to the other things that I've, I've done, I've always kind of jumped back and forth between uh, the various other applications and ar architectural history. And this, I've, I've done a lot of work where I've done documenting of architectural um, history that, that hadn't been kind of mm -hmm. recorded. And this was in, this was an interesting one. I was in Ecuador doing an architectural project, actually. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I discovered, because I found a couple of little black and white photographs in a, uh, in a book on, on Ecuador, was that there was this cloister that had been painted in 1701, the interior. And it was, it was a uh, absolutely strict enclosed cloister. None of the nuns ever saw anyone or let anybody in, except for the guy who had to do the repairs. And I met the guy, after struggling for a year, I finally met the guy that, that did the repairs for the place, who was an architect there. And he said, I've got to go in and do some plumbing. Come on in, you can be my assistant plumber. Carry the tools. And so I, uh, I went in and found this unbelievable set of paintings. and. Uh, and I ended up uh, talking to the nuns and explaining my interest in, in, in that subject. And that's where you spotted this recreation of the Last Supper. Well, and uh, if you'll notice, it's the recreation of the Last Supper where they're eating uh, guinea pig. Because <laughs> that's what they have there. Um, anyway, um, so I recorded it and gave a copy to the, the archives, the National Archives in, in Ecuador. I've done that in various places, including that uh, show that I did with you uh, mm -hmm. uh, at the Museum of Monterey, which yeah. was on Father Serra's Mexican churches down That's in right. Pietro State, where I kind of, uh, again, saw some black and white photographs at one point and said, what is this? And it said they were uh, Father Serra's uh, original churches back in the uh, from the uh, time before he came to California. Mm -hmm. And so I, I beat myself up going th over these really rugged roads back to where this was and found these wonderful churches that were all painted. There, there you go. This is um, uh, the, uh, the cover of the book that was done for that with Julianne Burton Carla Hall. And, uh, but all the churches were just gorgeous. Now, how much of this, I'm just finishing a book on uh, uh, Mexico from Montezuma to 1944 when the book came out. Mm -hmm. I, I found it on a job site, oh. right? And it goes through all, all the political events, doesn't talk anything about architecture or history, mm -hmm. but it talks about the impact and the influence uh, initially of the Spanish and then later of the Americas, uh, mm -hmm. North America, United States, Germany, mm -hmm. basically pillaging the resources of, mm -hmm. of the country. Right. So with all this color here, You've got the influence of Spain coming, Catholicism, and then you have the indigenous peoples. And that's Before the Spanish okay. arrived, they were still using color. Well, right? absolutely. I mean, Palenque was uh, over 2,000 buildings, every one of them blood red, because the gods had to look down from heaven and see you were sacrificing. So when we're looking at these images of these, these churches, there's the influence of 
the indigenous peoples, the Indians, as well as Spain. Overlapping. Absolutely. Um, and the, one of the things that's interesting about these, they have these huge courtyards because the people from uh, the area didn't want to go into a church to worship because that was the equivalent of going into a cave, mm -hmm. a place that was very scary to them. So they stayed out in the courtyard. The preach, preachers would talk to them out in this courtyard. That's remarkable. Well, there's, there's an aspect to your work that, that directly crosses over from photography into painting. And there are subtleties here with, that pull back into architecture. What are you working on now? Well, um, uh, that, the photograph you just saw was from, from India. That was the last large body of work that I, I did. I was there for about six months. And now you're doing a Spanish style house in PG. I, I am. I forgot because I, the, the folks that I met, they uh, were uh, the clients. They saw a model I'd done for a house I wanted to do that uh, didn't get built. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, that's what we want. Um, but they had a bigger site and a better site. <laughs> and and uh, so after back and forth for several years, they, they approached me and said, let's, let's move on this. And so, but I know the architecture so well because I've been down there for sure. 15, 20 years now. And so, uh, and, and I studied it, I understand it, and uh, so that, that was very, that was a lot of fun for both me and the clients too. We've got just this. a couple of minutes here, but to sort of put a oh. bow around this conversation, is this project gonna be the culmination of the, the, the photography work, the painting, the, docu the the anthropological part of it, into this building, is this gonna be? This is gonna well, be now the architecture is its own thing, you know, I mean, it's all influencing, everything But you're gonna be bringing that color, Oh yeah, we'll bring color the and, and uh, the, the archi and the anthropological work, absolutely. But I'm also, I've got a, I've got a show of, uh, of new paintings. I've been doing uh, my uh, oil and wax paintings, uh, right such there. as this. Uh, they're becoming that. more and more abstracted. Yeah. It's just Monterey Bay. I've got that coming up uh, shortly, and then I've got a show of photographs from Ecuador, which I'm finally releasing about the same time, coming up soon. And so I'm still doing everything. It's right. just uh, uh, every every piece of it seems to take longer than it used to so take. So if people wanted to, to see your work, um, how do they find you? On the web, well, website, what have you got? Nah, my website's pretty pathetic, actually. I've been too busy doing other things, but I have, uh, my paintings are at the Carmel Art Association. Okay. That's yeah. the only place you can find them. My photographs are at the Weston Gallery in Carmel, because mm -hmm. that's, I've been with them for decades now. Mm -hmm. Great people. And uh, as far as art and architecture, there's some on the web, on, online, and I assume there'll be more, but it's just, uh, I've, been, I've been busy with other things, haven't, haven't put my energies into that. So now you're gonna spend the next three months painting, that's what you said. Yes, that's it, by. exclusively painting and, and, and preparing some photographs for the exhibition as well at the Westons. But yeah, I've got, I've got my, uh, the next few months laid out, I'm gonna be busy. So if you had a, a young, talented kid coming from the, the, the flat Midwest saying, well gee, I could be an architect, uh, I could I could become a painter, a starving artist, or photographer. Uh, in ten seconds, would you tell him? Sure. <laughs> All of the above. All right. All, it's a wonderful combination. We've been with uh, Jeffrey Beckham here, artist, photographer, and architect, uh, coming to you from uh, your town. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Tom. It's been good.